Hey guys, just a little quick tip I found when working with the shortest edge paths nodes. And let me show you the problem. So when I toggle on X-Ray, you can see that there is very many overlapping geometry that we actually don't need. So for example, here you can see that this branch goes all the way from end to the beginning. But when for example, generating assets for game engines, it is really important that these models are optimized. So all this geometry inside of this longer branch here isn't needed. And so it should be deleted. And this here is a smaller example, but for example, this thicker branch here you can see that there is a ton of topology that we don't need. So when I toggle X-ray off, you can see that all this geometry is generated, which is then exported to the game engine. And this is a really critical performance hit. So yeah, let me show you how to fix this. So first let's go over the setup I have. So here is a grid. And on this grid, I instance my edge paths. So this isn't, isn't a tutorial about the shortest edge paths node, but just a quick overview. I used two random booleans with a low probability for the start and end vertices, and also a float random value for the edge cost. So without the random value for the edge cost, it gives us this straight result and with it looks more random and that's what we need. So yeah, then after this, I used a method to smooth out the mesh and I won't go over it in detail, but you can copy the setup here. So it's, it's important to convert the curve to a mesh, then capture the position attribute and use this for setting a new position. And here, for example, purposes, I used a mix RGB node which can lerp between the original position and the new smooth position. So you can see that here I have this uh, edgy straight curve. And if I lerp back to this, it gives me this smooth result. So you can actually do without this, but yeah, I like to have control over the smoothing. So yeah, neat little trick, but anyways, uh, the next step is to convert the mesh back to a curve. And then I set the curve radius based on the spline length. And with this, I can solidify the curve back to a mesh with a profile curve. And in this case, I use a circle. And this gives me this nice looking result. But still, there is this overlapping issue we have. So yeah, how do we fix this? So let me quickly go right after my curve generation. So right here. And you can't see it, but there are many, many overlapping points. And we can visualize it. For example, if we use a set position node and then offset the set axis or the set position of our curves based on the spline length. So the longer the curve is or the spline, the higher the Z value. So let me quickly pull up the spline length and put this in here. And right now you should see that all the longer curves are placed here at the top and the smaller it gets the uh, yeah, the lower the curves. Anyways, this is just for visualization. We don't need to do this. So we see that there are many, many overlapping points. And my idea here is to compare the points which share the same position. And for these points, I want to delete the points which are sitting on the curve with the lower length. So it sounds complicated, but let me show you what I mean. So we can delete this here. 
And now for comparing all these points which share the same location, we actually would need a loop, but with geometry nodes, we sadly don't have loops. So we have to work with multiple iterations. And the first iteration we can build really simple. We need to look which points share the same location and then look at its attribute. In this case, the spline length it sits on. And then I delete the point which has the lower spline length. So let me do this right here. So we need a transfer attribute node and use this for the source. Then I need the spline length. I want to transfer the spline length. And here you can see that we can transfer the attribute and we can choose the uh, domain. For now I leave it at point and then I want to compare this. And if it's greater than my current length, I want to delete this point. And here you can see an error is appearing. And this is because uh, the transfer attribute only accepts a mesh. So we first have to convert our curve to a mesh. So curve to mesh. And now we have the problem that this transfer attribute is evalu evaluating spline length and a mesh doesn't have a spline length. So what we have to do is to capture this right before we convert our curve. So right here we can capture this attribute and use the spline length. And then we use this instead. And here you can see right now that there is something happening and some points get deleted. But uh, you can see that the result isn't really accurate because we are deleting points. This whole edge here is getting deleted. So it would be better to delete edges and transfer the attribute from the edges. So I switch this here to edge. And also I switch this here to the edge domain. And right now you can see the result. And remember this here is a mesh. Uh, we can convert it to a curve. So mesh to curve. And actually we don't need to do this because here I convert it to a curve and then back to a mesh. But yeah, for organization purposes, I just leave it at that. And if I look at the result right now, you can see that we still have some overlappings. And this is because we need to do this multiple times uh, because this year is only comparing two points, the current point and a point which sits at the same position. But depending on how many overlapping points we have, we have to repeat this iteration here. So this year is one iteration. So let me name it iteration. And to make it more beautiful, I put this in a node group. And here I can simply duplicate this iteration. So right here and then I do this multiple times depending on how many overlapping points we have. So in my experience we should do this quite a few bit, but I think like around 10, 12 should be enough for my case. So yeah, it's a little bit of work, but we can do this. So the last
maybe like this. And if we go a level up, we can name this node clean up paths, for example. Now we shouldn't have overlapping geometry, but there is another problem. And you can see it right here that all these branches are floating in the air. And this is because we, doing, we are doing the mesh smoothing after we deleting our uh, unnecessary edges. So this causes these points to move slightly, a slight amount. And, but this is an easy fix. We simply have to do this step after our mesh smoothing. So we do the mesh smoothing first. So here we have the smooth curves with all these overlapping points. And then let me look here yeah, like this. We should insert this here. And yeah, you can see that most points are gone. And if there are still overlapping geometries, you can go in this group here and duplicate some iterations. Maybe you can create a logic out of this to switch between how many iterations you want. And yeah, with this you can really nicely create optimized paths with the shortest edge paths node. So of course it's all dynamic and procedural, so we can change values here. And it should give us nice results. So yeah, without, uh, with clean, clean up and without, you can see that there is a ton of geometry that we actually don't need. So yeah, that's a little quick tip for today. I hope you've liked it and see you next time.